This is a head gasket. This one's blown. It basically got cooked. And then this is the new head gasket. This is your temperature gauge. This is your engine. When your temperature gauge is at cold over here, you're fine. You can go indefinitely. But as your engine starts to overheat, there's more and more risk and there's more potential for damage. If you get into the hot just a little bit, it's not a big deal. Pull over, take care of it, whatever. But if you think to yourself, oh no, it's an emergency. My car's overheating, I better drive this home. And it's there for just a little while. If it gets hot enough, the damage is done. Allow me to explain. Engine temperature is important. If your engine's cold, you won't get good fuel economy or power or anything out of it. And if it's too hot, obviously damage can result. There's a sweet spot at about 195 degrees Fahrenheit where you want your engine to run. Your engine has a circulatory system. In fact, it has at least two of them. One for oil and one for coolant and then another for compression. So this gasket here is called a head gasket. And you may have heard when people, maybe your friends or somebody, or maybe it's happened to you that you've blown a head gasket. A head gasket has steel rings around the outside that help to hold in the explosion of the internal combustion engine. They also have ports for oil and for coolant. You have coolant ports that go around the cylinders to help circulate the antifreeze to get the heat away from where that fire is happening inside those holes. As for expense, it's expensive replacing a head gasket. You see all of these little hoses, all of these things that you connect, they all have to be bolted in a certain order to a certain tightness and it just takes a lot of time. This is your intake manifold and your fuel injectors. All of this has to be pulled off, cleaned, and then made basically like new, all these sealing surfaces. You can see this paper gasket here, it just broke apart because it was just so cooked. You see I've got rags in there to help protect it, but look at it, it just snaps like that. Everything in here is just cooked. I mean just burnt cookies all the way around. Most materials will expand and contract with heat. The more heat you get, the more they expand, and then when they cool down, they contract. The only exception to that is ice. When ice freezes, it expands and it's a darn good thing it does or else the bottom of the ocean would be frozen and create all kinds of problems. Uh, but this is a packing material here for the thermostat onto the water pump. It's made out of rubber. We talked about lead, what happens to lead when lead gets too hot. When this gets too hot, it basically flattens. If you look down the side of it, you can see that it's just flat. So it doesn't have the, it's not pliable anymore. When things expand and contract, it basically doesn't respond. This is what it's supposed to look like. Here's a good one. See how far that sticks out of there? I mean, it's raised up significantly. This was that way, but upon overheating, it cooked and became flat. It doesn't have that pliable, soft ability to seal anymore. And you have to have something to seal in between these surfaces because if you don't, the surfaces might have like a scratch or a pinhole leak or something like that, and it's going to leak. But if you put them together with a packing material like a gasket or a seal, then it's going to be reliable. Then you can actually go on a road trip without having your car break down. There's still rings that go around the top between the pistons and where the valves live. You've got your cylinder head on top and you've got your engine block on bottom. We call this the top end and the bottom end of the engine. When you look at this, the steel mesh you can see through uh, when you tear into it. And then there's also these little steel uh, sheet metal rings that help to hold back the compression. These are internal combustion engines. That means that they go bang. You know, the spark plug ignites the fuel or the diesel injector sprays into the cylinder when it's superheated air and an explosion happens. Typically your compression is around 150 psi, 180, something like that. So this little ring has to be able to hold that back. Again, like I say, there's a steel mesh in there that kind of helps to hold the shape, but the main part of the gasket is literally made of lead. If I take this uh, label here and rub it against it, it'll look like a pencil drew on it. But as you can see, it's kind of like pencil lead. It has that shine to it, but it's kind of a gray color. So what happens when you blow a head gasket is where all the coolant's going around here and the compression gases and all the fires happening in here, this antifreeze gets into there and then goes out the tailpipe. 
The other thing that happens is when that cylinder goes bang, it causes those gases, that smoke, if you will, to go into the coolant jacket and push it out and create air bubbles, and then the coolant doesn't circulate. It gets blocked by this superheated air. So when we look at this closely, you can see where it's melted away and just basically become destroyed. This one really got destroyed. This one is cylinder six, and it had so much coolant going into it that the piston's perfectly clean. You should have seen this thing smoking. This is what it's supposed to look like. You can see those little dimples from this mesh, the steel mesh that's underneath of it. And then you've got all of these different ports and rings and things. This is an oil port uh, where oil passes through. So oil and antifreeze get mixed. Antifreeze goes out the tailpipe because it gets in here, goes bang, and gets sent out through the tailpipe. And it's that white smoke that just hangs and hangs in the air. So lead fails. It has a low melting point and your head gasket's made of lead. Another gasket that's made out of lead is your exhaust flange gasket. This is like a packing material that goes in between your exhaust pipe and your exhaust manifold. It's got some kind of a sheet metal layering. When you look closely you can see all the different layers but it's essentially just a packing material to keep your exhaust from getting out. Exhaust contains carbon monoxide and other poisonous gases that can not only poison you but it can knock you out on a road trip or something if it's getting into the cab and it's really unhealthy. Those seal it up so that you don't have a leak. If you had an exhaust leak under the hood, ultimately heat rises, it would go out the back part of the hood and it would go in through these vents which are for your heat, ventilation and air conditioning and it would essentially pump in poisonous air into the cabin. We talked about lead, we talked about rubber, now let's talk about paper. This is the gasket for the new water pump. If you put it on like that, you can see that it's the seal or the packing material that goes between the water pump and the engine. And it's, it's pretty pliable, it moves pretty easy. However, the old one, if I take that and try to bend it, it just snaps. I mean, it just you can just pretty much crumble it up into nothing. Paper is supposed to wad up, it's not supposed to crumble up into a million pieces. Essentially it gets hot, it cooks, and just like ash or anything else when it gets hot, it just crumbles up and breaks. This is the intake manifold gasket. When you look at it this way it doesn't stick out anymore, it's just really flat. This is the new intake manifold gasket, and when you look down the two of them, you can see that the blue one still sticks up, whereas the black one is just completely cooked. If you don't have a good seal, then extra air gets into your engine and it throws off the air fuel mixture. It's just like a recipe for baking a cake. If you were to not have a measuring cup for the sugar or the flour or whatever and too much went in, it would ruin the recipe. When you have an air fuel mixture of 14.7 parts air to one part fuel, you have stoichiometric balance. Everything can burn. You have the right number of molecules to make that perfect so that you have good power and good economy. If your vehicle's too rich, it'll blubber and it'll lack in power. If it's too lean, it'll get really hot and overheat and burn things up. And ultimately, when you overheat a vehicle, you cook all your seals and everything leaks. Pretty much everything on the outside of the engine, top of the engine tends to leak. It just gets cooked. So this is the water pump. This turns the antifreeze, this seals everything off. But then this side's turned by the timing belt. So this is in the air, this is in the coolant. So what keeps the coolant from going where the air is? I'm glad you asked, that's a great question. Seals. This is a camshaft seal. There's a smaller seal that's about the size of that shaft right there and it causes the antifreeze to stay in the engine even though this is spinning. Now you've got camshafts, crankshafts, water pump shafts, power steering pulley shafts, so you've got an AC compressor shaft, you've got all of these different shafts with seals on them. Now this camshaft seal is the new one. The old one looks like this. And the old one is just pretty well cooked. It's it still moves. It's not completely failed, which is good. But it's really stiff. When you look at the new one, it's really pliable and soft. A soft pliable seal will seal much better than one that's petrified like a rock. They get so bad that ultimately they'll crack and break apart and crumble like that paper gasket did. The last thing I'm going to show you is plastic. We talked about lead, paper, and rubber, and how the adverse effects of heat destroy them. We're going to talk about plastic. This is the knock sensor plug, and it's under the intake manifold. It's trapped on top of the engine where all the heat is, and it's made of plastic. It's hard to get to. It takes several hours to pull everything off and put it back together to replace this plug. 
but we're replacing it because the buckle right here uh, this buckle was out okay it just broke too perfect so this isn't going to hold on anymore either but this thing on the knock sensor side the side that's buried clear underneath of everything broke the buckle I went to push it down to release I was wiggling it going to pull it up and it just snapped so when you overheat your vehicle the plastic also gets cooked here's that new knock sensor plug if I squeeze on that tab and pull up and squeeze on it all day and it's fine but where this is located the intake manifold and everything goes over the top of it and if this were to vibrate off because it's not being secured then you'd have a knock sensor code or it'd fall off if you don't have a knock sensor and you have pre-detonation due to carbon buildup on one of these pistons it can pre-detonate and cause an explosion when the piston's on its way up and break the connecting rod. This little guy, the knock sensor, retards the timing to make sure that doesn't happen. This is an important piece. It's basically like a microphone that listens in to protect your connecting rods. This is the cylinder head. These are your valves. If you look here, this is an exhaust valve. This is an intake valve. Each of these valves has oil on the other side of it. And then the tops of the valves are on this side. These have bucket shims that cover everything up. But if I pull this out, this is the shaft. It's like a trumpet. This would be the mouthpiece. The other side would be the flared horn part. But there's oil that fills all of this. And to keep that oil from getting down into your engine, there's a seal that's made of rubber and steel on each and every one of these. If these get too hot, remember heat rises, a couple things can happen. Number one, the most common thing that happens on an engine like this is that you'll get a crack between the valves. There's a little space and this is just aluminum. Aluminum moves a lot when it heats up. When you heat or cool something it expands and contracts. Aluminum doesn't want to do that. It will crack. This is where it's the thinnest part and this is the exhaust where it gets real hot. So these will crack and it will ruin the cylinder head and that will add another $500 to $1000 to your repair. Basically for that little bit of time where that temperature gauge gets to the hot you might as well be lighting all your gaskets and seals on fire. It just destroys everything. And the longer you stay in it, it's just like a house burning down. Time's of the essence. That's why fire trucks have sirens and lights and everybody gets out of the way because it's really important that you get over to the side of the road. If you can pull over and idle, if you can watch the idle or turn your heater on, sometimes say an electric fan failed, then you can use your heater core as a radiator and get the heat pulled off of the engine into the cabin. Just roll down your windows for your comfort. But my point is, don't cook your engine. If you start to overheat and it starts to get too hot, shut it down. You know, pull over first to the side of the road so you have power brakes and power steering working. But once you're off to the side of the road, um, try to let it idle. That'll allow the coolant to circulate and uh, watch that needle. If it starts to go down, then you're good. If it doesn't go down, then just turn it off. But as soon as you turn your engine off, the temperature is going to spike another 10 to 30 degrees at least because there's no circulation of coolant. If you can circulate the coolant and remove the load, say you're going up a hill with a trailer, just pull over to the side and idle. That will allow your water pump to circulate the coolant and you'll be a lot better off. Remember, even a $900 or $1,000 tow to the shop from over, you say you're overheating and you pull over and your vehicle is just, you can't drive it anywhere with overheating, it's better to pay 50 bucks, 40 bucks, even $900 versus paying to replace your head gaskets. Weird? Yeah, weird, but not as weird as losing $2,500 to save 50. Absolutely.